In this example, we want to compare two data sets where we have count data. And uh, an example would be, for example, we do an experiment where we have a condition one. Let's say we do some experiment with an antibiotic and we count 18 colonies on a single plate with antibiotics. Under condition two, where we don't have the antibiotic, we count 30 colonies on a plate. And now we want to know, is there a statistically significant difference between the two conditions, with and without? Now, the difference in the colony counts, they can come just simply from sampling error, or it could, of course, be that the antibiotic indeed has an effect. And this is where we need to calculate a p-value and we also need to do some hypothesis testing. So first of all, we need to write down some kind of a hypothesis and we would start with what is generally known as a null hypothesis. So we would state the null hypothesis and would just simply say that the population count and I abbreviate it like that. So the population count under condition one is the same as the population count under condition two. And basically the population counts for these two conditions are the same. And the only difference is just simply due to sampling error. Likewise, we can formulate an alternative hypothesis where we say population count under condition one is not the same as the population count under condition two. So that's our null hypothesis. And we can also set a confidence limit or significance level uh, we already have a significance level of alpha 5%, so that's our type 1 error, and we can state uh, the conditions under which we would reject the null hypothesis, and we would say if the p-value, the p-value is smaller than alpha, then this would lead to rejection of the null hypothesis. So that's basically our criterion that we are going to use with the p-value. So how can we calculate the p-value? Well, in this case, we can really use sort of a normal distribution and we can calculate the p-value with this uh, equation here. So we would calculate a z-score and compare the z-score then with a normal distribution. And the normal distribution is standardized. So here, this would be the mean of the normal distribution. And that would be here the standard deviation. And this true means that we are cumulative. So, what we can do is we can use this equation, but before we can do that, we need to calculate our z-score. And the z-score is uh, using this equation here. It looks like quite a monster, but it's actually not too bad because what we can define is that we can use our cell count with the x1 and the number of plates on which we observe them, which would be v1 for condition one, so that would be condition one. And for condition two, we use these numbers here. X2 would be 30. And again, we've got it on one plate. So let's see what we get for Z, our Z score. So we need to take the absolute value. So let's write this down. Absolute value X1 is 18 minus we have 18 plus 30 times v1 equals 
1 over 1 plus 1 and the absolute value and now it is very common to use what is known as the Yates correction because if we are working with small numbers then this is just a very loose approximation and the Yates correction takes care of that and we just simply subtract 0 0.5 from the numerator. And in the denominator we've got square root of what have we got? We've got 18 plus 30 times 1 over 1 plus 1 and again 1 times over 1 plus 1. And we can simplify this. So for example we have 18 minus 18 plus 30, so we would have the absolute value of 18 minus, we have 18 plus 30 is 48 times, that gives us one half, minus 0.5 and divided by square root of, we've got 48 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. We can simplify that a little bit more. So 18 minus 48 times half, so that would give us 6 minus 0 0.5 divided by square root of 48 over 4. Now we can calculate this z value here. We use Excel for that, so we would have equals 6 minus 0 0.5 gives us 5.5 .5 divided by the square root of 48 divided by 4 and that gives us our z-score. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. So this is our z-score and now what we can do is we can put this z-score into our equation here for the p-value and we can calculate equals 2 times bracket 1 minus the normal distribution and when we start typing then Excel comes up with some suggestions 2 times 1 minus normal distribution and we've got the z-score that is this value here We have the normal distribution with a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1, and we want cumulative. So we've got this, we close this bracket and the second bracket, and we get a p-value of 0 0.1. Let's make this a little bit like that. So that would be our p-value here. The p-value is 0 0.11. And now we can, of course, we can go back and say what does this p-value actually mean. We set our criterion earlier as if the p-value is, p-value is smaller, then our alpha, then 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, the p-value is larger than alpha and therefore we would fail to reject. 
so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, fail to reject, we would say there is no significant difference, no difference between the two population counts, between population counts. So in our example, it would not matter whether the, um, the antibiotic is present or not. Now, of course, this is a little bit of a, a wild calculation that we have to do, and we could use an online calculator. And here is the online calculator that we can use. Uh, it's very handy and I'll put the link to it into the description uh, of this video. So what we can do is we just simply say we, have, we need to make sure that we are in the right tab with the count data. So here we are 18 in, on one plate and here we get the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval for this count. And we've got also on the second condition we've got 30 colonies on one plate and we get the p-value here and this matches the p-value that we've got and we even get a result that saying that there is no significant difference. So here we got the p-value of 0.11 which tallies with the p-value that uh, we have calculated here in our calculation. So we can do that both by hand or we can use this online calculator. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for uh, watching this video.